this is Dee. Welcome back to Learn As We Grow. Today we are going to put some seeds into some cell trays to pre-sprout some plants for our garden this year. The case that you see is actually a photo storage container. You can get them at Michael's Arts and Crafts store. I saw the idea in an Instagram story from compost to table. She was featuring hers and I thought it was a fantastic idea so I was lucky enough to get one pretty much right away and it has been fantastic for sorting seeds. I chose to get the colorful labels so that I could label each of the cases inside with what was what and they are peelable so that it's easy to replace them if I need to. Okay so we're just getting the cell trays all ready to go. Any of the ones that were used previously they need to be rinsed in hot soapy water and then it's not a bad idea to spray them down with some hydrogen peroxide if you have issues with like any fungus or mildew or anything like that it's a great way to minimize the risk of it happening again it just kind of sterilizes the trays for you so it's a good idea to spray them down and let it sit for a while thankfully we haven't had too much of an issue with that but i'd rather be proactive and preventative when i can just off camera there i have a bucket with my soil in it i did add water and stir it around a little bit just to make sure it was nice and hydrated and and ready to use and so i'm just using that to fill up my cells I'm sure there is some amazing and easy and more efficient way to fill the trays, but this works for me. I have only really been seed starting for three years, even though we've had a food garden for 15 years. I'm still new to the seed starting world, so whatever you see happening here today, that's just me sort of doing what I know and what I've learned so far. I'm sure there's still plenty for me to learn. I know there's a lot of different science and different things that go into healthy soil and making sure that your plants have the best start and chances at being healthy and, you know, really prolific. And so far we've, we've done pretty well, but I'm still learning. And like I said, there's probably lots that I could do differently and do better. And other gardeners might do things differently, but so far this is what's working for us. Plus half the fun of gardening is getting your hands dirty, right? So when I am pressing the bottom of the cells into the other trays, that's just my way of checking to make sure that I got enough soil in the cells. I would top them up if needed. And I know sometimes gardeners will use those little indents to actually put their seeds right in there. You definitely don't want to pack it down too tight or anything. So you are going to see me plant an entire tray of Roma tomatoes. And you've probably heard me talk in my other videos about the fact that we would like to dedicate a growing space to growing as many Roma tomatoes as we can because we really love to preserve our own homemade pasta sauce. And while we have done well with just getting the bushels of tomatoes from the grocery store in the past. Uh, I thought it would be really fun to grow our own and just see how that goes this year with having our own tomatoes that we can use for the pasta sauce this year. The little twigs and larger pieces that I'm flicking out of the trays, it's just stuff that is kind of naturally occurring in the soil that is normally fine, but I figure might as well remove some of the larger pieces so that the little seedlings don't have to fight too hard to get through the, the top of the dirt. I know some people will actually sift the soil that they're using for seed starting, but I'd rather not do that. I figure there's a reason why it's a seed starting soil, so I like to use it pretty much as is. Now we're gonna plant some marigold. I did, I think, a half a tray of marigold. I would like to be able to plant some in the vegetable garden and some in the cup flower garden as well. You've probably heard that marigold is a great natural pest deterrent, so it's handy to have planted around the various areas where you don't want a lot of pest pressure. Last year I attempted to direct sow some marigold and it did not go very well at all, so hopefully this year I can get some hardy seedlings that I can transplant. 
We are on to the peppers now. I did a quarter tray of just like your classic green pepper. They're great for cooking, great for eating fresh, great for preserving, which I'm hoping to get better at this year. And they do pretty well in our garden overall. I will say I do not have a lot of success with seed starting peppers. I know they're finicky and I'm not the only one who struggles with seed starting peppers. They are definitely a, a warm or hot weather uh, vegetable which normally it, we have no problem growing it in our garden when we buy the started plants. So I'm going to keep trying with peppers every year and hopefully one year I will be successful in actually having seedlings that I can transplant out successfully and uh, grow them up to harvest. For the final quarter of this cell tray, I'm doing half jalapeno peppers, which I'm really excited about. I have really started to enjoy things like jalapeno poppers, which I'm hoping I can do some of those at home. And the other half will be the golden call wanders, which is basically a yellow pepper that should be very enjoyable to eat nice and fresh and crisp out of the garden as well. I am located in Zone 6 in Southern Ontario. So this weekend is seven weeks from our last estimated frost date, which is a nice time to start some of those seeds. There's a lot of seeds that require six to eight weeks of pre-sprouting time before being transplanted outdoors. So it seemed like the perfect weekend for me to get started on this and I was pretty excited about it. It's been very enjoyable and I'm just hoping that it goes well and they do thrive and yeah, I'm just overall pretty excited. Adding a little bit of water underneath the trays is a great way, especially as they do develop roots. It's the best way for them to drink some water and not become too wet and you know moldy on the surface we have moved on to the cut flower tray i am planting a half tray of carnations i am really in love with carnations so is my mom so is my grandmother it's just like a family favorite so hopefully we do well with those classic giant zinnias are being planted. I did some lavender and I believe I did some baby's breath in this tray as well. Of course I'm going to be growing a lot of other varieties of flowers for our cut flower garden. More will be seed started and there will be a bunch that I will direct sow outside as well as succession sowing a few things too so that I can continuously harvest flowers throughout the season. Label, label, label. <laughs> Make sure you are labeling your rows. It's not a bad idea in some situations to even add more than one label, maybe one at each end of your row, because things get turned and moved and shifted and you will forget what you have planted where. So I highly recommend labeling and lots of them. So again, just adding some water underneath. I will top that up as needed. And then we are going to cover up the trays and put them under some lights. I did end up switching these lights to red lights. It sounds like red is ideal for promoting healthy germination. So here they are and we will be watching them grow. And that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out. See you next time.